Get a load of the juicy tits on that one. I'd like to see that butt in jeans next time. Let me bend you over, baby girl. Hey, baby, give me a smile. The first memory I have of street harassment is being, I think, 10 or 11 years old, and I was at the beach with my friend. I was probably 14, I think, was the first time. Uh, I remember it was a day my mom could not pick me up from school, so it was the first time I was like taking the train back home. I was going walking towards the subway, the metro, which is like the subway in New Delhi, and a guy like kind of approached me and was trying to talk to me. I thought he was just trying to like make conversation, so I was trying to be nice. And these old men who were like these like crusty like surfer dudes were like whistling at us and like clicking like their you know, their mouths, you know, like and I was eating a banana as breakfast, just like on the go. And this one man is like, damn, I wish I were that banana. And then he started following me for around like five blocks back home. And the only reason he stopped was because I turned like a sharp corner. My mom and dad really like drilled into me, like the way that women are treated. And so I remember from a young age, like, four or five already knowing about rape and sexual assault and like kidnapping and stuff like that. Before it even might have happened I was warned about it because New Delhi is just it has um, a notorious reputation for that kind of stuff. There are horror stories of women getting in a cab or getting onto a bus and even with someone and then people just zero in and they target her as a little kid, like people would, I'd be out with my mom and people would be like harassing her a little bit, like whistling at her. My mom never spoke to me about that kind of stuff. I don't know if it made her uncomfortable or she just didn't want me exposed to that kind of stuff anyways. I don't think she knew, like felt like I needed to worry about it, especially at that age. On a day-to-day -day basis, I think I get cat called at least once a day. I get a lot of just like whistles or like, a surprising number of like, hey mamacita, and they'll like yell it at you, you know, as if they're like, you have to hear this. The staring is like the worst thing because it feels like like I'm a monument in a museum or like a, like a lion behind a cage in a zoo. My biggest protection is I wear headphones. I wear my Beats headphones and I, you know, make myself seen that I'm not paying any attention to anybody at all and sometimes I think that does protect me in a way. I carry pepper spray, sometimes I have my keys like between my fingers. Um, I carry a knife usually if I'm out by myself. I think I don't even carry it because I'm like, I have like this false hope or false narrative that things are going to get be better because I'm like, well, if I carry it, it makes it more real. When I go outside, I am definitely more scared because of cat collars. I think a woman's always calculating <laughs> outside space, time, what they're doing, who they're with. Stay safe, keep your eyes peeled, don't trust anybody. Don't get on the train cart. Like if you see one other person on the train cart, don't go on an empty train cart. Don't go out alone at night. If you're alone, then it's you feel so much more of a, like a target. When I get cat called, my response goes in one of two ways. I completely ignore, don't say anything at all, just keep walking straight ahead. And then there's definitely been times where I just get so fed up that I do confront them. I usually just stay quiet and just keep walking. Um, unfortunately, I can't do much sometimes because it's like, I, sometimes I get nervous and flustered. It's like, I don't, I really don't know. So my mind goes blank. I start texting to either be like, I'm busy or like, I have to like get it out in some way. And I text a friend or I text a partner. Like, can you believe someone just like yelled that or said that? I daydream about like yelling back. It hasn't happened because I'm always, I've also like heard or been told that, you know, as soon as you say something back, like they might get provoked. Literally anytime someone is going to come up to me, it terrifies me. I feel really unsafe. I feel meeker, you know, because you want to be like not bringing too much attention to yourself. And that sucks, <laughs> that's awful. 
in terms of relationships with other people, even friends or guys, if I was dating a guy at the time, I'd be like, if he complimented me, sometimes I would think, well, it's like, well, is that all I am to that person? It's like, are they only it, it, like dating me for my looks? Since like COVID, like I get catcalled more here now than I used to, I think when I do go out. People are out of jobs now and they're like feeling worse about themselves, maybe feeling worse about the world and that they're out on the street taking out on other people. People will still catcall you when you're wearing a mask and sunglasses. And it's so funny because you can't see my face. You don't know what I look like. I think with the pandemic, it's, you know, taking away even less of, you know, a woman's identity when she's walking down the street. The people who are trying to say, like, the woman's to blame, fuck you. Fuck you. I have been harassed wearing, like, a tiny mini dress. I have been harassed wearing a turtleneck and long pants and a face mask. It makes no difference. I have to think about what is it that I'm displaying that's going to invite somebody to talk to me. I think it's awful to cater to their view and their gaze and change what you're wearing because of that. It's less about whoever it's happening to and more about the person who does it. You know, it's victim blaming and I don't think that victim blaming is right. Stuff like consent and like not harassing people aren't difficult to understand. And the people who like do that stuff, they do understand. They just don't care. One sly little comment on the street can ruin somebody's week. To be able to like harass someone like that, just on the street who you don't even know, you have to just have this idea that like women aren't people. Like a lot of guys have told me in the past, like, oh, you have like a really big guard up. And it's like, well, I have no choice right now. Like anytime I'm nice to somebody, it's like they assume that I want more from them. And it's like, no, I'm just trying to be a nice person. But now I can't even be a nice person. Every, I think everybody now has an ulterior motive to me. I think there was a survey, this brand was asking women that if men were just like wiped off the face of the earth tomorrow, what's the first thing you'd do? And women were like, we'd go to a park. Walk alone at night. <laughs> Take public transport whenever we wanted. And not have to worry at all about what anybody's gonna say. Wear an outfit for myself and not feel like I'm in danger because of what I'm wearing. There are things that need to, um, change on like a deeper like cultural level for this to stop and it's not just going to change by telling people respect women or remember that consent is important. Starting the conversation early and talking about it is definitely going to make an impact. This isn't considered taboo anymore, it's considered normal to talk about these things as much as any other issues. People are getting much better at believing women and much better at taking action. You know, talking to females or what it means to give a compliment and what, it, what makes something too uncomfortable for somebody. And even when it's just a compliment, you have to be very careful with what you're saying. Hopefully it's getting less and less as the generations go by. But I think it's gonna take years and years of like, not just like education, but like also just like cultural shifts that sort of make it less acceptable for men to be so aggressive. Catcalling in and of itself is not seen necessarily as like super socially acceptable, but the thing is, it is, just kind of treated as just this like fact of life when it shouldn't be.